right, so we are going, getting ready to put together the pepper steak that we canned up. So this is the jar that was canned, and we are going to empty it into the pot. And of course, this has not gone through the canning process, so the veggies are still going to be kind of crunchy. Um, I am going to get that heated up. I'm also going to grab um, a quart of beef broth because when I'm opening these up, um, the original recipe does call for two cups of water or beef bouillon. And this just has enough of the liquid in it for the canning process in the jar. So I'm going to be adding some more broth to uh, make our gravy. So uh, we're going to get this heated up. I'm going to grab a jar and we'll bring you back when that's all heated up and ready to add the cornstarch and um, the soy sauce. See you in a bit. Now the other thing I added is a can of tomatoes. So if you can yours in pint size, that would be the perfect size to add to this. And you can see we're going to have a nice big pan there of um, the pepper steak to put over some rice. On that back burner over there, I have four cups of rice that I rinsed, four cups and five cups of water, and a stick of butter. So when I make my rice, I always make a whole bunch so that I have some to freeze or um, leftovers for breakfast in the morning to make rice cereal, one of our favorites. So anyway, we're going to get that heated up to boiling and I will bring you back. All right, so our mix has been cooking for about 10 minutes and I just wanted to do that uh, to kind of cook some of the veggies since they didn't go through the canning process. I didn't want super... Um, raw veggies in our meal. So over here, there's a little bit of the leftover broth in there, along with um, a quarter cup of soy sauce and three tablespoons of cornstarch. So we'll just get those mixed up. And I'm hoping three tablespoons is gonna be enough. It might not quite be enough just because I did use a full, um, container jar of the broth and so really for a for a whole one I should have used four tablespoons but I'm trying to get by with using a little less so we'll see how thick that gets if I need to I can add another tablespoon to it to get it thick enough so the other thing you can do is um, I, I also added another quarter teaspoon of ginger because normally I would have been um, doing an entire batch, which is about two quarts, and I would have put um, two, I would have put a half a teaspoon of ginger in there. So this is a little bit, has a little bit more gravy to it, or the sauce to it, than what um, making it from scratch would, uh, just because I used that whole jar of broth. But it still looks delicious to my eyes. So I'm going to get that heated up again and see how thick it gets. All right, so our rice is done. Have a nice big pot here. And I see lots of people that use rice cookers and I there must be something wrong with me because I had a rice cooker and I could never get rice to turn out in a rice cooker, which I seem to have the opposite problem of everybody else because it seems like nobody else can get it on the stove. And that's not my problem. So I don't have a rice cooker anymore. I got rid of it and I just do it on the stove now because I don't seem to have any problems with it. I don't know why I'm so different than the majority of people out there, but I am. All right, so let's get that nice and spread out and that rice can soak up the sauce. I'll grab the sauce over here. Oh, 
and the smell of pepper steak is just so good. So it is still a little runnier than how I normally make it, but um, I think it'll it'll be fine. That's just how it's going to be, I think, when I make it, um, when I can it. I can always thicken it up if I so choose, but for now I think we're okay. All right, there you have it. I think that needs to sit for a few minutes because it is screaming hot. And uh, once it cools down a bit, I will bring you back for a taste test.